Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how to wet sand and polish paint. I originally released the wet sanding tutorial video back in 2013, so this is my updated version, covering commonly asked questions and showing more detailed processes, along with what to expect during each stage. First, I'll be starting out with a single stage paint, and in the second part of the video, I'll be showing a two stage paint. Wet sanding will remove orange peel, improving the clarity and image in the paint. It will also help remove any foreign contaminants which may be on the surface, along with any runs, overspray, or even oxidization. It can be used on both single stage and two stage paints. Single stage paints is a form of paint applied which is both the color and finish coat, and will dry with a shiny finish. The two stage paints on the other hand require a base coat which is a color and finally a clear coat which provides the final shine and a protection to the base color. Wet sanding is a great way to improve a good paint job and can be used to help improve the quality of a poorly laid paint layer. Starting first with this ranger that I replaced the cap corner on. This is a single stage paint meaning that there is no clear coat. The paint was applied as a color and a finished coat all in one. If you are planning on wet sanding a current project that is being painted, make sure there is enough material to work with. Otherwise you can sand or burn through that paint layer exposing the primer or causing the area to have a ghosting effect. The area will need to be repainted in order to repair this mistake. After painting, I typically like to wait at least a week for the paint to cure. However, this can depend on the paint thickness and your climate. The paint needs to be hard so the sanding won't cause any damage or imperfections in the final finish. Using a bucket of water, soap can be mixed in to help aid in the sanding process. While the soap isn't mandatory, it does help lubricate the surface providing a cleaner material takedown. I would only recommend using a car wash safe soap that doesn't dry out any rubbers on the vehicle. With the sandpaper, Backing pads can be used, this can be anything from a flexible rubber pad to a foam backer. Backing pads should be used across larger flat surfaces to provide even pressure so it doesn't create any waves with your fingers. Coarser grits can be used, typically I like to start out with 1000 grit. A wet dry compatible sandpaper can only be used here, other types of sandpapers will fall apart when exposed to water. Ensure the surface is clean and wet. Always pre-soak the sandpaper and then continue to sand the surface. Evenly go over the surface removing any orange peel. Always keep the surface well lubricated and rinse away any sanding material when needed. Considering this was a blended area, overspray or heavy orange peel can be found present on the fade areas, especially since this was a spray can job. You can lightly go over this area. As you can see the difference between the high and low spots. The high areas will have been touched with the sandpaper while the low areas are still shiny. Around the body lines or edges, this can be done by hand, but be very careful when using your hand. If you are sanding close to any trim pieces, these can be covered up with tape as a form of protection. Once done with the 1000 grit sandpaper, almost all the orange peel should have been removed. There is no need to dry the surface, but it does help to see where you're currently at and if you missed any spots. There should be somewhat of a uniform finish. Rinse the area, removing any sanding material and move up to 1500 grit sandpaper, again using the same process. Always pre-soak the sandpaper, ensure the area is wet and work evenly across the surface. With a single stage paint, you'll notice the color of the paint in the sanding residue which is normal. If you are working with a two stage paint, you would only be sanding the clear coat and the water would be a milky color. If you are getting a color in a two stage paint, that means you have sanded through the clear coat and have damaged the final finish. Before moving up to 2000 grit, here is the current finish. Moving on to 2000 grit, using the exact same process, at this point all the orange peel should have been removed and now you're only left with preparing the paint for polish, removing those coarse sanding marks. Work evenly across the surface just like before, keep the area well lubricated and rinse away any sanding material as needed. It isn't necessary to change the bucket of water when switching between sanding grits, just make sure that the bucket is quite full so any sediment from sanding has a greater chance of settling to the bottom. Once the wet sanding process is done, here's what I'm left with. Darker colored paints 
has a higher risk of showing imperfections so it does take more time to create a flawless finish. With that being said though, those imperfections will still exist on lighter colors, they're just harder to see. A 3000 grit sandpaper can be used, but I find a little extra patience and time, a polishing compound can still achieve an excellent shine. Using a polishing compound, here I am using Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. Depending on what type of polish is used, companies will typically have a list of what the compound is intended for, along with the grit rating. This can be done by hand or a machine polisher. Being that this is fresh paint, polishing by hand would be the safe choice and this isn't a large area either. You can use a buffing pad or typically I stick with a soft cloth. Apply the polish to the cloth, it can be dabbed around the surface, then work it onto the surface. It's typically not recommended to work in a circular pattern. If you pick up any dirt, this can leave swollen marks which can be harder to remove than compared to a straight scratch. That's why it's always important to have a clean work area. If you are using a machine polisher, you can still have the same issue with the rotational pad. It can cause some damage. If the cloth or pad is dropped, put it off to the side and use a clean one. Don't risk damaging the paint. As you can see, the paint shine is coming back and with the wet sanding, you're left with a crisp clear image. When polishing a touched up area, it's best to go further back onto the existing paint so the paint will match and you won't be left with one shiny area. This will be the final shine of the paint and when done correctly, this should maintain a shiny finish. After a bit more time, here's a final shine. As for wax or other types of paint sealant, this should be only done when the paint is fully cured. Curing times can range anywhere from a month or longer. This does vary between paints, weather, thickness, and quality of products used. Moving on to a two-stage paint, this involves a clear coat. The clear coat was peeling from these fender flares, so they were removed from the truck, sanded down, had a primer applied, then a base coat, which was the color, and finally a clear coat. Again, you will need to ensure that you do have enough paint to work with. If you sand through the clear coat, the final finish will be damaged and you may need to apply more clear coat or completely redo the surface altogether. Same steps as before, make sure the paint is cured enough to work with. These were left for a few weeks before I had time to get around to polishing them. Ensure the surface is clean, pre-wet the area, and that sandpaper will need to be pre-soaked. Start out with 1000 grit sandpaper to remove a majority of the orange peel. Considering these do have a curved surface, either use a flexible backing pad a soft foam block, or if you're comfortable enough, use the palm of your hand. Only apply light pressure allowing the sandpaper to glide over the surface. Drying the surface, here you're able to see the high and low areas. The orange peel is being removed and you'll be left with a smooth surface. Once most of the surface imperfections have been removed, move on to 1500 grit sandpaper. Rinse the area as needed. In this case, considering I'm only working with clear coat, the sanding residue will be a milky color. If a color is shown, then you've gone too far and you have hit the base coat. Before moving up to 2000 grit sandpaper, here's my current finish. 2000 grit sandpaper is intended to remove the 1500 grit marks and it's fine enough to move on to the polishing process. Rinse the area and sandpaper as needed, keep the area well lubricated and work evenly across the surface. Now I've only wet sanded the outside visual area. The area inside the fender flare has been left as is. Using the same polish as before, apply it to a soft cloth or a pad and then work it onto the surface. Medium pressure is all that's needed to help cut back those sanding marks and bring up the final shine. Again, only clear coat is being polished, so you shouldn't see a color on the cloth. If you are seeing a paint color, you've gone too far to the base coat. With a single stage paint, it's normal to see a paint color on your polishing cloth. After a moment, here you can see the polished paint. With the fender, as an example using a machine polisher, there are various abrasive ratings on pads available. I'm using a fine polishing pad with the same polishing compound as previously. It's much easier using a polisher, however, it's also much easier to damage the paint. Just allow the weight of the polisher to lay on the surface. Do not apply excessive pressure or hold the polisher in one area. Work across the surface evenly, and as you can see, the shine is coming back. Just like before, you'll need to make sure the paint is cured enough before a wax or sealer is applied. 
When paint is curing, it gives off gases, and if it doesn't breathe properly, this may have negative effects on the curing process. And here's the final shine once it's done. Any excess polish can be cleaned away using a soft microfiber cloth. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.